All right. Let's get started. Today's a pretty exciting event for us. I think we have over 500 attendees um, uh, registered for today's webinar. Uh, today, in this week's uh, Smart Suite webinar series, we're focused on how Smart Suite customers are using connector products like Make to better integrate their workflows within their business in ways that help drive efficiency. I'm very excited that, to have two very prominent leaders join me today in this webinar. For those of you that may not know me, I think most of you probably do. My name is John Darbyshire. I'm co-founder and CEO of SmartSuite. Very honored to be joined by Fabian V, the CEO of Make, and Gareth Ronovos, the founder and CEO of Gap Consulting that's here. I've had the opportunity to know Gareth for a couple of years. My relationship with Gareth started as a fan, like many of you probably on his YouTube channel, watching him produce no-code content and just share his expertise around all things no-code and implementation and automation of business processes. Gareth, we appreciate your YouTube channel and the vision that you brought to the no-code space. I think that there's not too many people in the overall space that, that don't know of you. I think it's a privilege for people to have the chance to hear from you live uh, today as well. I'll say the same about Fabian in that we, we've had a relationship with Make formally for about a year. We kicked things off in October of last year as I had the opportunity to uh, visit his, him and his team in Prague. And Fabian, thank you very much for the generosity and the way that you hosted Myself and Tara, uh, while we were there, we very much enjoyed the tour of your space, the meeting of all the different team members associated with Make, and then obviously the dinner that you took us to that evening was pretty spectacular. And I will say if you are in Prague and you have the opportunity to stop by the Make facilities, it's truly uh, a, a class act. They do things right there. It was very engaging and inspiring to have the opportunity to, to meet with people there. Um, to kick things off here, let me just go through just a quick agenda. We'll try to keep the, the slides and things to a minimum so we can get right into the live demonstration. But for those of you that might not know SmartSuite, I'll provide just a couple of minute overview of kind of our mission, vision, and have the opportunity to talk about our roadmap in the Q&A section at the end if you have questions. Um, Fabian is going to do the same around Make. He's going to spend a little more time to make sure that Smart Suite customers really understand the value and vision of Make and how it relates back to and can support your business process workflows that you have inside of Smart Suite. And then we're going to really get to the crux of the conversation. And then Gareth is going to do a live demonstration where he's going to focus on two different use cases. One that's very simple, just to show you how easily you can integrate Smart Suite and Make, and one that's a little more complex. But he'll also be available for questions. So get those questions prepared if you want to hit Gareth with very specific how-to items inside of Make. We also have some team members from Make that are available in support that if you get really technical, we can go to the some of the lead folks on the product team at Make to get those questions answered for you as well. All right, so let's we'll jump in here. I'm gonna just jump out to our website to help educate people on, so who is SmartSuite, what do we do? So SmartSuite is a no-code platform that helps organizations manage processes and projects on a single platform. So think of us in a way that not only do we, we help connect workflows inside of the organization, but we do that both from a business process perspective. So think of sales, marketing, HR, product, finance, different processes you have in the company, as well as projects that you may be managing inside of the company. Think of us as one platform to manage work. It, we typically are described as a work management platform that's there. And the word no code that we use to describe things is just a very fancy word to say you can use drag and drop capabilities to organize and manage workflows inside of your business uh, that's there. One of our customers said it best, and I'm going to steal this line from them when they help des describe Smart Suite and who we are. And that comment was it, it's like Monday.com, Airtable, and Notion had a baby. And out came Smart Suite. And that's a great analysis because it hits on the three tenets of what we provide that we feel is a little unique to the industry in that we provide a platform that's similar in maybe Monday.com, if you're a Monday user, around projects and productivity types of things. So you can manage projects and tasks, and our architecture is built in a way to manage those and provide the Gantt charts and the timelines and the my work and all the things that you need around managing projects and tasks. But in addition to that, we also help you from more of a process perspective or a database, maybe more like an Airtable, if you're familiar with that or a service now, where very traditional business process automation capabilities that are there. And then the third component is unstructured data. Think of a, a Google Doc, a Notion, a Coda, where you have 
documents that are mainly unstructured data with a little bit of structured content. We provide all three of those capabilities into one work platform that's available. Here are some examples of some of the types of processes that we manage. We have 35 different categories of business processes that we help support. And the way that customers can easily get started with SmartSuite is you can start a free 14-day trial. No credit card uh, is required. You can log into our product and answer a few questions. And then we allow you to see a listing of different templates. So we have about 200 best-in-class business process templates across 35 different categories of workflows. So if you're a marketing person and you want to know what are best-in-class marketing processes that are in place, here's a listing. I can click on one of these and in about three seconds, it downloads this template with demo data and everything into your account. So we provide what we call four workflows that almost any business will have. And then we have more industry-specific things, whether you're a bank, credit union, a church, a nonprofit, real estate, construction, venture capital, very specific. We add new workflows to this every couple of weeks as we continue to work with customers. And what's interesting and helps set SmartSuite apart is that when you have multiple workflows, maybe sales, marketing, products, and QA, and you have connections between those workflows where you need to share data, that's where SmartSuite begins to shine. And Gareth will show a little bit of that off in the demonstration that he does today. But this is where things get really important with products like Make, is that we allow you, we have connectors with products like Make that allow you to bring data in from other products into your workflow, consume that information, and at times push that data back out to those products or to other products as part of an overall workflow that you may have in place. As you think about automations, SmartSuite customers know that we do have the ability to have automations inside of SmartSuite and they will be somewhat similar to make. And I wanna very quickly just help you understand why our vision and how why we've partnered with make that's here. So inside of SmartSuite, we take a, an approach with triggers and actions. So I can go in and say, when a new record is created, a record is updated, a form is submitted at a scheduled time, a particular action takes place. I'll say here for the example, when a, a trigger happens, I could come in and say in this table product roadmap, when these conditions are true, I want you to take a series of actions. You can take those actions back inside of SmartSuite with creating records, updating records, generating emails. You can also integrate with other products. So we have about 15 products that we integrate with that are here in comparison to Make. I think Fabian will share that number's over 1,600. So we provide some of the basics that are here that, that our customers are asking for day to day. Make is gonna provide you with a listing of pretty much any other product outside of SmartSuite that you need to integrate with and bring data in, into and out. So that's the reason that we formed the relationship with Make about a year ago. Um, was specifically for this reason. And it was specifically a request from our user community. We were integrated with some other connector products. The user community kept coming back and saying, you need to integrate with Make. There's some immediate value to us. And I'm going to let Fabian share some of the reasons why that our customers felt that way. But this, what I'm trying to communicate is that this was a direct request from our user community for this integration that's here. That's a very quick overview of SmartSuite that's there, but I want to, I think most of you probably already know us and I want to leave as much time as we can for the presentation. So without further ado, I would like to introduce the CEO of Mank. Thank you, John. And hi, everyone. Welcome also from my side to everybody here in this webinar. I'm super excited to uh, talk to you a little bit um, through Make, but also about why we entered into this partnership. And I can only... Um, re-emphasize uh, how a pleasant journey it has been with John and Tara uh, partnering up over the last year and really building out something together here. Um, but first, let me briefly introduce myself. I'm Fabian. I'm the CEO at Make. I've been building and scaling businesses for a while. I've seen probably around 100x growth at the Zelonis journey over the past uh, decade. And in the more recent years, the last three and a half years, I've been uh, going through this 10x growth journey with Make so far, but we're just getting started. So a lot more to come. In business, I think you should embrace 
principles first thinking. This is like really breaking a problem down into its uh, main components and really coming up with the right solution for it. And also, I really believe in radical candor, a high level of empathy, really caring about what you're doing and what you can caring about doing together, but also uh, being very candid and open about the communication and just, uh, yeah, building trust by being transparent. Personally, I enjoy the outdoors. You can see it uh, here on the slide, uh, skiing in winter, hiking in summer. This picture with the team on the right side is actually from the No Code Summit. Uh, this is exactly where John, Tara and I first met in person. This was in Paris last year in October. And since then, we've really accelerated. And I hope this is a start to building some long lasting relationship. And of course, at Make, one of our brand values is life is play. One of our cultural values is game on. We really think when you're building something, when you're doing business, it should also be fun. And hopefully this comes also across in our product. So for those of you who have, have never heard of Make, some high-level numbers. Today, we have 130,000 active users on our platform. And out of those, we have 60,000 paying customers that are leveraging our technology to drive value in their business. This is all supported by our great team that's based mostly out of Prague, but also distributed in the world by now, overall with 300 employees that we have in our Make organization. So why do we exist? At Make, we believe in creating a world where everyone has the power to innovate without limits. That's our vision. And we imagine basically powering innovative solutions around the world. We believe that every person and every business, uh, let's stay on the slide for a second. I want to really make this point clear, please. Every business holds the potential to make a meaningful mark on the world and every individual in this organization. And for us, it's about unleashing that potential. So we want to empower these individuals to visually create, build, and automate to their true potential. And we want to help find new approaches to challenges in the world and in your day-to-day -day work. And the most important thing is empowering people to be creative about doing this and how to tackle these challenges. And I think that's what really brings the power of Make. And on the next slide, you see how we do that. We think it's best done... Uh, by empowering innovators across the business. If you are someone who's ready to challenge the status quo, then maybe make is for you. Our users often are the ones that have this urge to create and try something new. It's about this inner drive to leverage technology to find new ways of creating solutions. And we really see that this is about the people that take something and bring it to the next level, going beyond their job description and beyond what's expected of them to figure out the best solutions for their business and ultimately optimizing globally across the organization and not just in the individual pocket. And that's how we think about empowering people, really building out these innovators and, and empowering them. So how do we do this? Make is a very visual platform that allows you to visually automate and iterate over these automations. So as John said earlier, we have more than 1,600 th apps that we can connect to out of the box, many more via like more generic modules. And you can then drag and drop uh, these modules into our canvas to build scenarios. It's interesting because you can build decision-based logic, you can build nonlinear workflows and really receive unlimited, like unlimited possibilities of the use cases. So the imagination is really what's your limit here. And this is also why we want to continue on down this road. So if we go to the next slide, you will see that when we started, we were mostly thinking about how do you integrate systems across different technologies, leveraging API and building good integrations. But uh, quickly, we saw that our customers are building very interesting solutions. So they've leveraged this visual interface and this playful solution that we had to really build also more advanced and sophisticated uh, workflows and automations across all types of processes. And this is when we launched under a new brand, Make, and we've only been going for a little bit more than two years by now under this brand. And you've seen the numbers earlier. We've made great progress. And the next frontier for us here really is to get this into something that we call almost like a business agility platform that allows you to innovatively adapt and quickly adjust to the market around you by really making adjustments to like how you drive value for your customers, how you're building out your internal processes, and so on. And on the next slide, I want to talk about this element that I think we skipped one. Sorry. Of course, you can connect system to system. So like John pointed out, you can with Make connect to more than 1,600 apps out of the box. And that's already exciting in itself. At the same time, with the advent of AI, 
it's probably getting to a point where over time, point-to-point -point integrations will be more and more commoditized. There is, of course, value, and we'll continue to build on that and make this bigger and the easier it gets, the more integrations you will receive through make as well. But over time, I think where there's even more value is when you can take this extra step, building business logic into it. And this is what you see here is like really thinking about, okay, what are the requirements from a business side and how do I reflect that in my workflows and the scenarios that I'm building and then really driving value for the organization and also being able to quickly iterate over these things as needs from the teams change as your process uh, or your systems are updated or your new requirements come in from the market, from your customers, etc. And that's why we partnered up with SmartSuite to really um, give extra power to the SmartSuite uh, product and platform. And just to name a few of these things that you can achieve uh, with these technologies together, you can start to build custom solutions triggered out of SmartSuite, just as you saw uh, from Jern already, and where we will get a demo after this uh, from Gareth as well. But you can also start to really create limitless workflows. There is no limit to how much you can expand the canvas. Uh, in the images here, a couple of modules, but we have customers that build out highly complex scenarios that operate across many different systems at once and uh, allow you to leverage these technologies together, branch out into different dimensions and uh, iterate basically over that. And last but not least, via our more generic modules, HTTP calls and webhooks, you can virtually connect to any app that has an API in some form or shape, even if it's not an out-of-the-box integration with Make, but having these HTTP and webhook, webhook modules for the more advanced users basically uh, make it very easy to connect also to other APIs uh, at high efficiency. Personally, I believe there's a very exciting element in combining Smart Suite and Make as technologies, especially you heard earlier SmartSuite thinks a lot about how to drive value in the business by thinking about these business processes, these business functions, whether it's marketing, whether it's HR, whether it's sales, operations, finance, IT. You usually have very precise requirements and different technologies involved. SmartSuite helps you really manage the work across those. And there's underlying systems that usually are involved in your business for like systems of record or transactional elements of that. And combining those and getting the business logic across those into, yeah, communicating across the systems, that's, I think, where we can drive value and where we can really drive value across all business functions. In some ways, you can almost imagine make like a Swiss knife that could do anything for you in this regard, but it's really about what are the technologies you're using, which are the systems you have in your HR department or your marketing team or your sales organization, and how do you want to leverage them together with your smart suite solution to get your work done more effectively and more efficiently. And I've brought some custom examples that underline how different customers are using the technology today and that show you that it's not about a certain function, but this can be really brought in the business. So the first example here is from Webflow, which they are using Make to process ticketing in their support organization, driving higher customer satisfaction and more efficiency in resolving the tickets and getting uh, solutions to their customers faster. Another example here is from Ship Hero, where this is more about operational uh, efficiency in the warehousing operations and replacing manual workflows and really driving yeah, more meaningful work to the team actually. And the last example is Finn. This is actually a German startup that launched a couple of years ago into the US market for car subscriptions, doing all of that without deploying a single one of the engineers by going into a new market, acquiring thousands and thousands of new customers that subscribe to cars via the Finn platform today. All of that driven by this additional effectiveness and efficiency you can get out of leveraging Make to yeah, get systems work for you uh, instead of working against you. And for us, it's super important to find ways how to also empower the next generation of that. And this is really about harnessing the power of AI. We've seen a lot of traction in our customer base, leveraging AI technologies in different ways, shapes, and forms to get more value out of Make and out of their other systems as well. So on the one hand side, we're allowing users who are just getting started to get assisted in building out their workflows. We've recently launched our co-pilot uh, that allows you to uh, out of the box tell it, our technology what are the, what's the workflow you want to build and the first scenario is sketched up for you and you just need to start connecting your different apps to it. But also we want to really supercharge the work you can do 
in your workflows without technology. So think about uh, getting different um, technologies, whether it's a GPT module from OpenAI, Vertex databases, all types of different technologies that you want to have as part of your workflow connected automatically. And I think here, that's where it's interesting about combining the powers of no code and AI. Because in AI, you can do things one off, but really when you drive business value, it's about doing it again and again for a specific solution that you want to achieve. And that's when you need to get it into your workflow and automate it and get it into the systems where actually the work is being done and where you have your systems of record or your interactions with your customers. And I think that's why it's so interesting to supercharge your workflows with AI. And of course, we're leveraging it, of course, a lot internally also to really just drive more value, get more technology out of the door quickly and build for our customers. But with these things, I just want to encourage all of you, take a deep look into the demo that we're going to get from Gareth. I think there's an incredible power in combining the technologies of Smart Suite and Make, and it can really bring your business to the next level, get more work done for you more effectively. So, and let's unleash business agility by leveraging that together. And let's see this in action in a second. Thank you, Fabian. I really appreciate that. As Gareth is getting ready here, let me just share that Smart Suite, we run our entire business on our own platform. So every business process in Smart Suite is actually run on Smart Suite. And we use Make as the connector for us to share data across many different systems in that journey with products like Intercom and others that allow us to bring in and out customer data as things are happening that's there. Yeah, let's turn things over to Gareth now. And Gareth, I'll let you share the stories and the use cases and let's just jump in. Awesome. <clears throat> Everyone can hear me okay, I hope. Thank you so much uh, for the introduction as well, John and Fabian. And I love listening to the way you both describe your own companies. For quite some time, Gap Consulting has been in the no-code space producing YouTube content. That's the company I run. And our mission started by just focusing on education and saying, hey, these tools are out there. So many people don't know about them, but they are revolutionary to the way that we work. And, and so our mission has always been to educate first. And from that, people were drawn to our, our company and, and we've grown as a byproduct of that. So I'm excited just to hear everybody talk about their own products. And it's funny, the way I think about the tools is very similar, but maybe a little bit different. So I just want to share that with you guys here today. And then we're going to jump into some examples. So to start off, Smart Suite, I look at this as a place to store your information, your source of truth. And Smart Suite allows us to do what a spreadsheet would do, but in a much more powerful way, because not only are we storing data, but we're also connecting and interrelating that data across the different, the different data sets that we have. Smart Suite also has incredible advanced permissions that enhance collaboration across your team. We're not going to get into that too much today, but I do want to plug that because it's one of the biggest selling points for the platform. And also... It allows us to visualize that data. I am a data geek. I love rows and columns, but I've come to learn over the years that not everybody loves them as much as I do. And Smart Suite has a lot of amazing ways that we get to look at our data, calendar views, card views, Kanban views, et cetera. Uh, and so we're going to dive into that a little bit here today. On that note, the key takeaways that I want you to understand about Smart Suite for our demo purposes today are tables, linking, views, and formulas, which I'll go into very briefly here. So in my first example here, which we're going to get into in more detail, but I first want to just point out up at the top, I'm inside of Smart Suite. It's a cloud-based platform. So this is in a browser. And I have these two different tables. These are called uh, tables. Each one of them represents a data set. So I have social media posts and I have clients. And these things are interconnected. So my social media posts are done on behalf of a client. I'm assuming in this example that I'm a marketing agency. And so I am posting, I'm uh, drafting social media posts on behalf of my clients. So these are tables. Each one represents its own set of data. The second key point I wanted to point out was the linking component. And that's demonstrated right here. So we have the social media posts table, this data set, connects to clients. And through this linked relationship, we're actually able to extrapolate or pull in all the information that we have associated with whatever we're linking to. For example, if we had multiple different clients and we wanted to post to different social media accounts, we would store the social media account data on the client level. 
And then when we link to that client, we look it up. We automatically know it because it's associated with the linked relationship. The next point I want to bring up to you is views. So talking about the way that we can visualize different data inside of Smart Suite. If I come down here, I can create all these different view types. It does not change the underlying data. It changes the way I visualize the data. And I think that's a key takeaway here. I can look at the data in a meaningful way. I can bring in the information I need to see. I can leave out irrelevant information for this particular process. So I have timelines, Gantz, charts, dashboards, which we're going to actually see in our more advanced example. I even have a map view where I can take longitude, latitude coordinates or addresses and see that on a map, grids, cards, etc. So lots of different ways to visualize the data. Again, just with a few clicks, I'm able to take the data that already exists here and visualize it in new ways. Okay. So that was smart suite in five minutes, which in an, in and of itself is a feat. Uh, again, being able to, to get through that. Now I'm going to try to do the same for Make. Make allows us to connect online software. It is taking information from one place and allows us to move it, manipulate it into another place, which is so valuable. I, I think just the words in and of themselves don't do justice to what Make makes available to us. I hope that by the time you've seen the uh, demos that I share here today, you understand the true power of what this does, but ultimately allows us to perform these repetitive tasks automatically. There are repetitive processes in every business, in every organization that suck up manual time. Uh, when people do them manually, copying and pasting data. I know because before I owned Gap Consulting, I worked in finance and 90% of my job was moving data around. It was absurd. I didn't know about these tools in those days. I really wish I did because I feel like I could get 10 years of my life back. And so all of Make allows us to do is move this information around in a way that is repeatable and in fact makes the outcome even more productive because not only am I saving manual labor, the time that it would have taken me, also the brain power that it would have taken, it also removes error, right? I, I don't have to worry about copying and pasting something in the wrong place. And suddenly my data is even more uh, protected. Now, in terms of make, if we're to really understand the core components, I want to dive into connections, triggers, and actions. So if you're brand new to ever using make, here's a quick demo. And we're going to jump into this in just a moment. But first, when I log in, the very first thing I want to do is connect my different platforms. So I'm going to open up Again, Make is a cloud-based software. I'm in my browser. I can open up and look at all my connections. And you can see we are a bit of junkies when it comes to our utility of Make, but I can add new connections here to any other tool, to Airtable, to Google, to, I'm not going to list all 1,600 of them. I doubt I could even get through half of them. But pretty much anything online that is a cloud-based software that I want to move information from, I can do that. I can build that connection here. So that's the first component. Now, the second thing is triggers. In building an automation, it's called a scenario. So over here in Make, what we can do is just come down to scenarios and we can build a new scenario. It's actually quite easy to do from scratch. As we let this load, all I do is say create a new scenario. And each component in the scenario is a module. I just start. I find the software. If I haven't already connected to it, I connect to it. And it's that simple. I'm just taken through steps on my screen. It's all drag and drop. And back to our uh, example here, the first thing that kicks an automation off is known as the trigger. It is the scenario, the, the conditions under which the automation will commence. Everything that happens after this trigger are the action steps that are related to the automation. In this case, I'm and I'm going to jump into my my next slide here in a second. But in this particular case, I have the trigger of a post is ready in Smart Suite, and then I'm going to post it to LinkedIn, and I'm going to come back to Smart Suite and update it, update the data with post confirmation. So before we dive too much into this scenario, let's go back to our slides. Now that we understand the core components of these tools, and here are my recommendations for building anything in these tools. Number one, first and foremost, map out your process internally. Whatever it is you're trying to accomplish, 
you have to have a good grasp and a good understanding of what that is. What are the conditions that go into this? What are the pieces of information you require, et cetera? However you prefer to do that, whether it's with a uh, pen and paper or uh, a mind mapping software, uh, it's totally up to you. But I strongly recommend putting the time in here because I can't tell you how many times I've worked with clients who have skipped this step, built something completely irrelevant for their actual final process. So take the time, map it out, you'll thank me and save a lot of time yourself. Next, we're gonna build the data schema. So we're gonna go into Smart Suite for this and we're going to put together the different data sets. Each data set is its own table as we talked about and we can interlink those tables. Once we have our data schema in place and we're able to store the data and the information we need, then we build the workflows and most of the time, we're going to make to build those workflows because of the fact that make is connected to so many different tools. Once we have those workflows established, unfortunately, our job is never done as no code builders. We are now in the maintenance and support element of it. And so as you roll this out to your team, yes, you're going to save tons of time, but your business process might change over time. You might see new enhancements that are required inside of your solution that you built. So you never really get to wash your hands of it. It's going to run in the background, but I strongly recommend that you uh, do maintain and support all the solutions that you put together. All right, so let's talk about our first example here. I really love this mind mapping tool. By the way, this came from a tool called Whimsical. If you're not familiar with it, it's just a nice software online that allows you to do some mind mapping. But our idea is that we are, we're a marketing firm and we are going to draft a social media post for our client. Uh, and then we're going to schedule this post. But before we actually post, we require client approval. So clients will approve these uh, posts. And once they're approved, we don't want to have to think about them anymore. We want that automation to you know, run in the background. And so if the client approves the draft, then we are going to post on the, si on the client's account. And this step right here is where Make is going to take the data that lives in SmartSuite and plug it into the client's LinkedIn account so that we are done. If the client does not approve, then we're going to go back to drafting a new post and we're going to rinse, wash, repeat over and over again. So quick example then understood, hopefully. Here we have our social media posts. Here is the copy. In this case, it will say yet another test. Here's a URL that we want to share. Maybe we have a piece of content that we want to share here and, uh, and we're going to share this URL. And so once the client's approved this and we see that it's scheduled, then we want an automation to pick it up in the background. So what I've done in the background here is actually built a formula. And this formula is taking the difference between this current moment in time and the date and time that we've scheduled for this to run. So you can see here, March 20th at 10 a.m. I'm sorry, March 21st, I set it for uh, tomorrow so that we don't trigger prematurely. So this is scheduled 1500, approximately 1500 minutes from now. And then we're able to look at this output with another formula. This is the power of formulas. It's manipulating data in the background and making determinations from what that data is telling us. It's saying, look, I have a certain amount of time left. And when it gets to be zero, when, when the time left approaches zero for this schedule, and I have approval, this is approved, and the post is complete. In these conditions, I have this formula in SmartSuite that is going to tell me it's time to fire the automation. So here's what that looks like. We have a connector inside of Make that looks at SmartSuite and it's waiting for that very component. It's waiting for this field, this formula to say, trigger the automation. And once it sees something that says trigger the automation, then we are going to post this information to LinkedIn. We're gonna post the URL and the post copy that came from SmartSuite. Public, we're going to post this publicly to our URL, to our LinkedIn. And then we're going to go back into SmartSuite and say, hey, we finished that post. We don't want to post it two or three times, right? So we're going to update it. And we're going to say, hey, the post is now complete so that we don't post it again. And we're going to come back and update it with the post ID. So right here in SmartSuite, we've built it so that we can actually store the post ID and we will mark this as complete. So as a quick demo, let's go ahead and test this. Cross our fingers that I did my homework. 
And I'm going to make this close to now. It's currently 9.38. So let's say that this was to trigger at 9.45 a.m. And as soon as I make that change that the automation trigger right here, it happened in the blink of an eye, but it changed to trigger automation because of the fact that my minutes left to post was approaching zero. And then that triggered the make automation in the background. Cool thing about make is I can actually drill back here and look at my history so you can see that this just ran. And here's what happened. It picked up this information from SmartSuite. It posted to my LinkedIn, which I'm gonna actually be able to refresh in just a moment and show you. And then it went back into SmartSuite and it updated, hey, I finished this post and we can see all that right here. The post is now complete. And here is the post ID that did not exist previously. So hopefully this briefly demonstrates to you how we can take this automation. Let's refresh our page, by the way, and see LinkedIn now, by the way, this is live. I um, mean, I have to delete it because here it is though. This is a test or yet another test with a link to a URL that's gonna take you to Gap Consulting's blog so that you can learn more about Smart Suite, Make, and no code in general. Pretty cool stuff. Let me delete this before people start to wonder what's happening. And all right, there we go. So that's a quick, easy example. Imagine now that we are a marketing firm and we're doing this for dozens of clients, hundreds of clients. We can put all this data in Smart Suite, share access with our clients, let them approve these different posts, and they're going to go automatically get posted to the different uh, social media sites. I can include links. I can include images. Uh, I can get much more robust than what I shared here. This is this is version one of and the degree of complexity that you can bring in. So that's a marketing example, but let's talk about a finance example. Imagine that we have all these different tasks now in our second, more complex example. We've got time allocated and in Smart Suite, we're able to track the time that we are devoting to completing these tasks. Different people are assigned to these tasks and we know how much time they've tracked. We also may have billed against some of this time already. So for this particular one, for Rebel Brands here, we've got six hours that we've logged that we've committed to completing this task. We've already billed for two of those hours. So we can easily calculate. We've got four hours left that we still need to bill. So how tedious is it to go in and add up all the different tasks that you have and to go into your invoicing software? Let's say you use Stripe and create an invoice and then create all the different line items that says, okay, I've got email content. I've got to bill you for four hours. I've got a photo shoot. I've got to bill you for two hours. I've got this one for one hour. And at the end of the day, it's exhausting, right? So much uh, copying and pasting and just time wasted. Let's imagine instead that we just look at Rebel Brands and we go, ah, oh, check it out. Because I've got a linked relationship to my tasks, I know that there's a total of 11 hours that are unbuilt. I can add that up. I can build a quick, easy formula. You'll notice that everyone's building email, by the way, is uh, mine because I don't want to spam people with fake invoices here today. Let's say I just want to push a button. I build a client. That's it. I've got an automation on the back end, slightly more complex than the last one, that's going to go in and find the client, find them in Stripe, find everything that we have not yet billed, update the times in Smart Suite so that we don't build them twice, create line items in Stripe. Then we're going to build an invoice, send it out, and then we're going to update Stripe with that, or excuse me, update Smart Suite with that information. So just like that, I push the button. And now when I go back, we have zero hours left to be billed. And maybe most importantly, I can go in and see on an invoices table, hey, check this out. I just submitted a new invoice for 11 hours at 100 bucks an hour. So 1100 bucks. You could even imagine another, and here that invoice is, by the way, we just stored it back inside of SmartSuite. And you could imagine another invoice that when that, or excuse me, another automation, so that when that invoice is paid, this gets updated automatically. Quick, easy update. We mark it paid. We have a beautiful dashboard that says, ah, cool. We now have paid and I'm going to refresh my page so that we see our totals get updated here on our widgets. And now I see I've received another 1100 and there's no money in that's outstanding right now. This obviously is a much more complicated. This is version two, version three, but I strongly encourage everyone to 
if you haven't already started building inside of Make and Smart Suite, get started. I didn't start here. I still get stuck. Thankfully, I have an amazing team that helps, that helps me when I get stuck. But the point is that I'm trying to make is that you can save so much time, even an automation that saves you five minutes a day, if you do the math, is over 20 hours of time saved in a year. And that's year over year. It just compounds. I strongly recommend getting into automation uh, if you haven't already. And that is the end of my presentation. All right. Thank you, Gareth. Uh, great, great demo of what the capabilities are between Smart Suite and Make. I will say that Gareth provided two use cases that are pretty simple in context. The second one was a little more complicated. However, we see customers that do things using Make that make what Gareth showed us the complicated one look very simple. Interacting with six, seven, eight different products as part of a single workflow and passing information back and forth as things are happening that are there using looping and repeating uh, across things, you can get very complex in the way that you can set makeup to interact back with Smart Suite uh, to share information in your workflow. And to recap the value that Smart Suite sees with partnering with Make is that when you have workflows inside of Smart Suite and you need um, to integrate with other products as part of the workflow, but you want your core people to work inside of Smart Suite, you know, the non-technical people that are just doing their job each day, all that technical repetitive stuff can happen outside of Smart Suite using make and passing information back in using buttons, just like Gareth showed. It's time to send an invoice, or you can use countdowns like he showed where we can write formulas and when things get within a range, things automatically kick off uh, inside of Make uh, that's there. Without further ado, let's move into the question and answer section that's here. I think we've got quite a number of questions that are already coming in direct, but feel free to go into the Q&A section. I'll be monitoring that as we answer some of the first questions that are here. Fabian, I'm going to start off with you. One of the first questions coming in is about, can you tell us a little bit more about Make's data security so that Smart Suite customers can feel more comfortable using a product like Make? Absolutely. Any certifications that are there? So yeah, can you take us through that? Yeah, actually, like I was expecting this question to potentially come up. I would even be able to briefly share it on a slide if you allow me to. And of course... Um, the range of customers that we have at Make range from some of the smallest businesses, solopreneurs, to some of the largest business businesses on this planet. Uh, we have several Fortune 500 companies also leveraging Make already. So you can be confident that we have a good level of security in our platform and um, that we are adhering to to all the required standards there. Um, I think someone's sharing the slide already. So uh, let me just talk through that briefly. So basically... Um, our, uh, as a company, uh, we are ISO 27001 certified. We're currently undergoing our SOC 2 process to get that certification in place as well. Everything's securely hosted in an AWS environment, actually not just in one, but we have different locations as well, especially for anybody who's in Europe, you might be interested in getting your data hosted in Europe as well. And we're making this possible too, which is probably the GDPR piece that some people are looking for. You can make sure that you can do single sign-on in case you want to make sure that only certain folks can access uh, your organization and get access to your scenarios and workflows. And last but not least, uh, for our most advanced and most mature customers on our enterprise plan, we all also host them in separate zones to make sure that you cannot even be under any load from any outside attacks or anything like that where someone's just trying to get to that. So I think overall, we got you covered. There's a lot of different ways how we're making sure that you really have a enterprise-grade security in place when you need to and different levels of that based on what you're choosing and how you're going to operate. But don't get worried about that right away. If you want to start small, you can sign up for free online. Just try it out, play around with it. It doesn't stop you there. But once you're getting to this level where you're saying, hey, I want to go big, or I really believe in the value, let's have the conversation and we'll get you vetted in every angle that you need to uh, validate this. Perfect. Thank you for that answer. We have the same question for Smart Suite. I'll just leave this slide up as we answer the, the same question here. Smart Suite is, is ISO 2701 certified. Our SOC type one review and report has been issued. We're in the stages of the SOC two. I think we're 30 days away from the SOC two report being issued that's there. We also host on AWS uh, and have uh, uh, all the reports and certifications that go along with AD AWS with the hosting environment. Uh, our GDPR and um, 
HIPAA reviews are underway to be completed probably in the next two to three weeks uh, that's there. Uh, we also offer single sign-on. Our two-factor authentication comes out in two weeks. And uh, we do a lot with advanced permissioning uh, as well. So very similar uh, story between Smart Suite and Make on how we can help large enterprises that are more concerned about security feel confident that uh, the, the products are for you. Uh, that's there. Next question is, what do you feel sets Make apart from other platforms in the market? I tell you what, let me take that question and then I'll Fabian answer that from his point of view as well. So I think I mentioned at the beginning, Smart Suite, the user community actually asked us to look into creating a connector into Make. The reasons that were communicated back to us were two particular items, the ease of use, just the UI, how easy it was for them to understand and use. It's very visual in the way that you can actually see how your workflows are laid out. So that was number one. Number two was pricing. And I'll, I'll let Fabian communicate a little bit more on that, but they provided favorable pricing in the space compared to some other players that made it more economical for companies of all sizes uh, to be able to use that. So Fabian, do you wanna share your thoughts on that as well? Yeah, absolutely. I think we are offering a very powerful technology at a competitive price point. So I, I cannot agree more with that. But at the same time, I would also point out that there's probably an element of versatility of our platform that shouldn't be underestimated, where you can really branch out in the workflows and really build sophisticated scenarios and really get some business logic into that. And at the same time, given it's a very visual way of approaching it, our customers and users enjoy doing this and building this out a lot more. And often, especially in like the conversations that I am in, it's one of the key reasons to go with Make is actually, it's just more fun building things with such a visual interface. It, it sounds almost uh, contradictive. You would think features and functionality is the first thing to look for. Of course, I think we, we have a very strong platform, but it's really also about the feeling and like, really, like being able to achieve things quickly and in a fun way. And also being able to share this with colleagues, helping them understand it very quickly and getting the organization engaged and ready to behind that. So I think that's something I will point out on top of that. All right. Thank you. Gareth, anything to share from your perspective as a consultant and that's had the chance to use multiple products? Uh, in, in respect to what, John? Sorry. Uh, how, why Make is different or how it... C correct. Yeah. How, what, what, why are customers using Make maybe over some other products that are in the space today? I found the versatility uh, in Make to be its differentiating factor, as well as what you mentioned already, the price point. It's uh, definitely one of the more economical uh, tools on the market right now to get started in, and it scales with your business. So if you're not 100% sold on the idea of building automation and third-party tool, it allows you to get started for a small investment of, gosh, I don't know, what's your lowest plan, Fabian? $10 a month, something like that? Around that uh, price. Depends on how, if you go monthly or yearly, but slightly yeah. below or above 10, yes. What a small investment to be able to save even an hour a week, I think is well worth $10 a month. And and so from there, it I think you'll very quickly realize the value of it. And that's what we see most of our clients get drawn to it for. That and, the, and as Fabian already mentioned, the visual builder, it's just so easy. One thing I didn't demonstrate is there's a button you can push inside of a scenario to, it will walk you through what the process flow is. It, it has this little bouncing component that shows you we're going to take information from here and pass it here, and then we're going to iterate, and then we're going to expand based on a filter. It's just it's just an intuitive builder. It's great. Perfect. Thank you for that. Let's jump on to the next question. Fabian, again for you, can you talk about the support ecosystem of Make and how you can support new customers? Absolutely. Happy to. I think there's different elements. So first of all, I think there is very little barrier to get started. Yeah, you can just sign up online and try it out. We have in-app guides there, of course, but we also have free academy trainings on our website. So you can just go there to our foundational training, to our basic training, and really learn the fundamentals if you want to. And I think that's really something everybody can achieve. And it's really just about putting some effort in and, and looking into it. And then I think if you can grasp the concepts behind software in general, SaaS, then I think this will go very quickly. And then, of course, if you want to build something more sophisticated, we have great ways to support you there as well. We have a community online that's very vivid. That's like our community that you find via our website on make.com. Different people engaging there and really looking into 
hey, what are the challenges that other people have? And really then leveraging that to also exchange on ideas, creating new use cases, new solutions, and building that out. And then last but not least, we have a huge ecosystem of partners around us as well that uh, help you also with more advanced and sophisticated use cases Then can build out scenarios for you, can maintain them, anything like that. If you want to go all in basically and have someone really help you build this out for your business. Perfect. Thank you for that. On to the next question here from uh, Xavier asking, can you be pre precisely describe how Smart Suite is different from Notion? So yeah, I'll give you my take just very quickly. That's there. Notion is a pretty fantastic product. It, it, it allows you to build documents with capabilities that go into bringing structured data into a document and then very easily share that document with other people that you might be working with. Uh, smart Suite provides a capability very similar to Notion. We call it a smart doc. That is just one of our 44 field types. So in any form where you're collecting information in any record, you can have one or multiple smart docs that are there that give you very similar capabilities to Notion. What's different about Smart Suite is that unstructured data can then become part of a more core process that you have in the company. And it allows you, typically people that use Notion are smaller teams of people. And when you start using Smart Suite, you can build more security and control around the entire process. And the Smart Doc, the content there is just one piece of a broader process that's there. But Notion is a great product uh, on its own. Don't have anything negative to say about them. We just provide a very similar capability as part of our overall product offering uh, that's there. Uh, Scott Snyder um, kind of has a, he says, building on the theme in QA, I have a thought that a showcase program could be very powerful in helping two audience, the end users of SmartSuite and Make, as well as those companies. A showcase webinar series could inspire and educate both users, be easy to get started with SmartSuite and Make and quickly become overwhelming. Agree with, with that. Uh, an educational series that goes beyond simple initial designs that demonstrates a more sophisticated solution could be very helpful to all. Noted. I, I think that uh, we have quite a number of partners that are sharing content around how they use Smart Suite and Make together. Um, but we should also consider maybe more of an educational series that could be a series of three to four webinars over a period of time that build on themselves uh, with some more complex use cases than what we showed today. Today was the entry point. Uh, but th there's so much more that can be done there. I, I agree with that. We'll take that under consideration uh, for sure. And uh, maybe if you allow one comment from my side on that, I think this is definitely something that will drive a lot of value. I think what I've seen a lot last year at Make, we've hosted our first ever user and customer conference with more than 300 participants. And the feedback that we got was that most of the value came actually from exchanging about use cases across the people that were at our conference. So a lot of things happen when you get this inspiration from other users and other customers and what they are able to do with the technology. And I think that's probably similar for Smart Suite because in the no-code space, often there's very little limitation to what you could build if you have the right imagination. I could see it already earlier when we showed, uh, when Gareth showed this LinkedIn use case, someone was asking, could you do this with Facebook or Twitter too? Of course you can. But Someone needs to give you this inspiration, right? And that's why I think giving, getting into these use cases and exchanging ideas and, and building a platform where these also more advanced use cases can be shared across uh, the user base is really exciting and something that is definitely worth exploring further. Okay, excellent. Next question very quickly. How does Make cater to businesses of different sizes? Yeah, so... The way how we approach it is that we are having two angles here. One is, as you scale with our technology, that's how you can progress through our plans. So we have a more like our most fundamental plan. It's our core plan. That's that has, of course, some limitations in terms of features, but it gets you started at a reasonable price point and you can get started there. Once you're looking into more sophisticated things, uh, maybe some other apps, maybe some team capabilities, maybe some additional custom functions, like a lot of different things that goes then into different plans. And then you can upgrade there and get more functionality. On the other hand, we are pricing by operations. So basically, as you automate more and more, you're also just like being charged on receiving more value by automating more. So basically, as you grow with our technology and getting more and more use, then we will we also charge you more. So basically, you can sc scale at whatever speed you like, uh, and upgrade to new functionality as you see the need for it. Perfect. Thank you. 
we have a similar question on the pricing model of, of Smart Suite that I'll address very quickly. So Smart Suite has multiple plan types. We have a free plan. So you come in and start with a 14 day trial. At the end of that trial, you can make a decision to move to uh, a paid plan or you can stay on our free plan. That's there. There are some limits around the number of records and automations and things you could do on the free plan. And then we provide four different tiers of plans from a, a team professional enterprise and signature. Starts at $10 per user per month on our team and then moves up um, to about $40 on our per user per month on our enterprise plan if paid monthly. And then we have price breaks for annual that relates to about 18 to 20% of the monthly fee. So things come down at that level. That's there. I encourage you, if you do have questions on that, just reach out to our support team and we can help you select the plan that might be right for your business based on just a few questions that we could ask you to understand the type of usage that you might want to, to have in your company. All right, next question. Uh, it's from an anonymous attendee. It said, it's unclear on the relationship between Airtable and SmartSuite and Make. Are these totally separate or do SmartSuite and Make rely on Airtable in the background? I'm currently using Airtable, so I also need these tools. Newbie question. I'll give you my perspective and I'll let the other team, uh, the other members answer this as well. But yeah, there, there's Make or SmartSuite doesn't rely on Airtable in any way. And in, in fact, SmartSuite and, and Airtable provide uh, similar capabilities that are there. I could sell you on how we think we're better, but we're in the same category of product that's there. Make is a connector that connects with our products along with the 16 other products uh, that was communicated before. So if I got any, anything from your side to add to that? Yeah, you don't need Airtable to get started with Make either. Of course, we connect to Airtable if you want to use that, but you're completely flexible, whether it's Smart Suite, Airtable, or anything else. We're happy to support you. Yep. Um, Gavin Brennan is asking, are there official Make certifications? What does that process look like? There's two types of certifications. One is... Uh, through our academy. This is basically user certifications. You can take them as you go. You go through our trainings. They are available online. They are for free. You just sign up to our academy and you can certify yourself. That kind of builds confidence for yourself, but you can also share it with your colleagues, get them excited about it and build the momentum in the organization. And then for our partners, we have dedicated partner certifications that have also more strict tests around it to make sure like whoever is certified as a partner from the make side and engages with that make certification in the market as an official make partner is really able to serve you well. And you can find those partners also listed on our website. Excellent, thank you. I'll answer the same question on the smart suite side. So we have an academy and the person that is hosting most of the video content in the academy is actually Gareth who provides the actual training that's there. We, everything in our academy is free. So you can take any of the courses that are there, hundreds and hundreds of different things you can look at there across three main tracks. We also provide different levels of certifications from newbies that you're just getting started with Smart Suite to more expertise inside of an organization through our partner certifications, very similar to what Meg just mentioned. So we have service partners like Gareth, uh, Gap Consulting is certified in Smart Suite, has gained the certification that's there, and that's the way that they present back to the community that they have the knowledge around uh, Smart Suite uh, that's there. All right, saying, please consider adding Make Interface directly into Smart Suite so we don't have to bounce between both <laughs> apps when creating, building out our automations. That's a great question. I think that's something more strategic for Make and Smart Suite to talk about longer term. It's something that's came up quite a number of times for sure. So we, we uh, on the smart suite side, we understand that. And I think and that's a discussion that we'll continue to have uh, in the future. Yes, of course. Thank you for the inspiration here from the panel. And let's chat about that separately. Yeah. Next question is smart suite is a great database. What about front end for SaaS? So I think what you're asking here is, can you uh, create workflows in inside of smart suite? And then can you either white label or build specific front ends on top of that? That would be unique. That's there. So we are releasing a number of features over the next three to four weeks that get us really close to what you're asking for here. Gives you more control over the visualiz visualization of the product, but we're moving in a direction where other products, other companies can build products on top of SmartSuite in a way that doesn't mention SmartSuite. It's very specific to you as an organization and how you want to present information back in a workflow or a product that you're charging other customers for. So I don't want to go into too much Detail on that right now, but know that's an initiative that's underway that we'll be uh, announcing here probably in the next three to four weeks. Uh, that's there. 
Leo King has another question here. He says, if not already, can we please use Airtable attachments such as pictures and video links from G Drive and Dropbox as full frame, full width elements in Smart Suite? This allows our creative clients' ability to best leverage collection assets as beautiful galleries uh, and digital experiences. So, Leo, there's a lot of this that we already do, but I'll note your name. I'll find a way to reach back out to you today. And we can continue this discussion. So I fully understand what you're looking for uh, uh, that's there. But the answer is, if it's not supported with bringing in the attachments that you need from Airtable, it's something that we'll look at. But I think the answer to that is, is yes already. All right. It looks like a lot of the questions are getting answered that are in here as they're coming through in the background from some of our team members that's here. I've got one here, Gareth, for you that's coming. What are some of the most common use cases that you're seeing as a consultant around Smart Suite and Make? That's such a hard question to answer. It feel I feel like it runs the full gambit. The thing that different or that ties everything together is that we see a large uptick in service-based businesses or in organizations that are using these tools in tandem. But by no means does that mean that you have to be service-based in order to receive this value because I've seen plenty of folks in manufacturing, in retail, using these tools as well. In terms of the core departments, I feel like I could just list the departments in an organization and there would be use cases for them. I'm talking about marketing, huge benefits in marketing, finance and accounting, sales, creating pipelines and tracking leads throughout the process. And then ops, operations is probably where I see some of the greatest gains because you're, you're effectively talking about streamlining the operations of an organization to make it run more effectively and efficiently. We see a lot of similar type projects, but I feel like every project that we work on for our clients is in some way unique and bespoke to their specific needs. I hope, I hope that answers the question. Yeah, I, I think so. I'll, I'll answer from my perspective as well. So it's pretty similar to what Garrett just said in that we see that lots of different use cases that happen inside of our customers. But one of the core themes is that the core data is inside of SmartSuite and there's something inside of SmartSuite that is triggering an event to then start a process that happens. And then we see one to three or four on typically integrations through Make with different products that are passing information amongst themselves as part of the process. And then at different points in time, sending data back to SmartSuite so that people are in SmartSuite doing their work, but all the interaction is taking place on the outside. Marketing is a huge one. We see there's, that's just an amazing use case. We see a lot of people that set up very easy integrations to automate posts and just simple things, approvals that need to happen, client approvals that then turn into posts, those types of things that are there. Operations for sure is the mo some of the more complex types of things, especially around billing invoices, month-end processes that need to take place to share, to share information. All right, more technical question that was coming in from Jeff. He said, how often do date-based formulas update in the background in SmartSuite on the community forum? Someone said every four hours. I'm wondering if this is accurate. Pete answered this question, but I'll just answer it for everybody that's here so you can hear it. But it depends on your plan type. So if you're an enterprise plan and you use a now function, which means we're calculating behind the scenes constantly what the current value of that is, that happens every two hours. So that happens 12 times a day for you to check that. And if you're in our pro plan, it's every four hours and team plan is every six hours, four times a day. That's there. Gareth, I think you use a lot of out now functions. Any, anything to add around the use of those? Just that in, correct me if I'm wrong, John, but I think that the numbers you gave are specific for in the background, right? So if I have that browser up and running and I'm looking right. at that data, it's calculating more real time. It is, yes. So every time that you actually drill into a record that's there or you open a view, we calculate that information in real time as that information is open. If you're not in the system at all, it just happens in the background every two hours if you're on enterprise. So your processes are always kicking off. Uh, that's there. Awesome. All right. Let me see if we have just a couple more questions here. Nelson is asking, what would be a reasonable time frame to expect the webhook feature within Smart Suite to be available? Make answers a lot of these needs, but a webhook would help simplify a flow working to build and manage with Make. 
So we provide webhooks inside of our API currently. I think what you're talking about is inside of automations for a trigger and an action webhook capability that's there. So those are being worked on. I don't have an exact date right now. I can get that for you, Nelson, if you give me, uh, I'll, I'll find a way to get back to you today or tomorrow with a better time frame. but we're probably in the four to five week range to give you an idea. It's not something that's coming out in the next week or two that's there. Um, another question from Donald on dashboard view, will you guys be including comma separated values? For example, if the value is 11 million, the dashboard displays is 11 million with no comma. The answer to that is yes, that is coming uh, very quickly. I mean, in regards to bar charts. Okay, so the display of information in the tooltip in the bar chart. I We will look at that today. Uh, that should be something that if it's not working that way, we can very quickly uh, update that for you. All right, I think we're closing in. Um, we're about 15 minutes over our, our, our time frame. If there's any last questions, please get those in here. It feels like we've got most of the questions across the team answered in the background already. I'd like to Can point out it? that was going in the background. Uh, someone asked if we have a pro program for nonprofits. We actually do. At okay. Make, we want to empower also organizations that are not working towards profit. And you can apply to get some reduced uh, licenses for Make via our NGO program. You've seen the answer probably in the chat. But in general, like where we can find small ways to give back here and there, we're happy to do. So. And so that's why we launched this NGO program. And we have some exciting success stories that already came out of that action. Excellent. Yeah, I'll say the same thing on the Smart Suite side. So we have a very similar program for Smart Suite for both nonprofits and educational uh, institutions. So if you fill out a form and qualify for that, we share some pretty heavy discounting uh, back for you to help you get started. It's our way to give back to the community uh, directly through the product um, as well. So it's great to see that that Make is doing a very similar uh, program there as well. Um, Leo's got lots of good questions here. So Leo's coming in again saying, Hey, most of these solutions appear primarily focused on more of the business non-visual oriented clients. Um, please note you, you have all the pieces and just need a, a few visual tweaks. It could be excellent visual uh, tool as well, especially for currently underserved small digital agencies. Please consider supporting more thoughtful layout structures and better embrace the image video assets uh, schema. Leo, completely agree. That's part of uh, the things that I've mentioned that we're working on now is a strategic initiative that come, we'll be announcing in three to four weeks. That's there. We're giving you more control over uh, how you can communicate information back to very specific types of users uh, that are in place. So we're very excited. I, I don't want to get too far ahead, but we're very excited about what's coming down. Gareth knows he's been part of the group that's been sharing feedback on that with customers on, on what they're looking for. But give us about three, four weeks. We'll announce it in one of our what's new and coming soon webinars uh, that we do. All right. I'd like to uh, say thank you for everyone for attending today's webinar. Gareth, turn things over to you first. Any closing comments that you would like to share? Uh, just to let you, these tools, Smart Suite and Make, have obviously put together uh, very robust uh, training platforms. Uh, as John shared, we got to even be a part of, of theirs. Um, but if you can't find the answers that you're looking for, please don't give up. Our services are available. Uh, we have both educational services, courses that we've built, as well as, as hourly consultants that you can just book an hour with and fix that automation that you can't seem to get working or fix that data schema that or that formula that's broken. And then we also do more complex projects. If you need help in this space, we've done thousands of projects at this point, and we would love to, to help you too. Thank you for, for tuning in and for being a part of this, uh, but that's all I wanted to plug for us. Thanks, John. Thank you, Gareth. And, and uh... Fabian, I'll just mention real quick that we just have an anonymous attendee that's saying, hey, they're, uh, they they love would love to be a part of the Make Endeavor and would love to be a part of the team. I see that one of your team members is answering them on how they might get started uh, with that as well. But any closing thoughts you'd like to share? No, thank you for a very engaging uh, webinar today. And uh, I appreciate all the questions. Uh, this was really exciting. I also really like the use cases that Gareth was showing, was showing. And I really believe in the power of Smart Suite and Make together. And I hope you all will get a ton of value out of this partnership. So thank you for being with us today.
Thank you, Fabian. And I just say thank you again for everybody for attending. And next week's webinar on Wednesday, we'll be hosting uh, Pistos, which is a company that's built a product on top of Smart Suite around cybersecurity. It's a chief information security officer in a box that's there where they provide services to help you be compliant and achieve regulatory compliance. They'll be sharing that particular product that they built and price points on how our customers could take advantage of that service uh, if you have an interest that's there. Again, thank you everybody for attending and we will see you next week.